Hi, this is Professor Wolbert. I'm going to show you, you know, some of the differences between App Inventor 1 and App Inventor 2, and in particular about gets, how you get properties um, and look at them and how you change properties. So I've got this I Have a Dream app. It's real simple. You click on the play button and it plays a speech by Martin Luther King. And if I go over to the blocks, um, you'll see that the blocks for this app are very simple. You click on the button and you start the player, which plays the speech. Okay, so I'm going to change it so you can also pause and play. Okay, so in other words, you know, kind of every time the user clicks this button, the text zone will switch between play and pause, and then of course the speech will play and pause. So you kind of toggle back and forth. All right, so over my blocks, the first thing, of course, is I need an if statement because when I click on the button, I'm going to have to ask, what's the text on the block? If it's play, I'll start playing. If it's not, I'll, I'll pause it. Okay. And here's where the changes in App Inventor 2 come in. Um, so one thing is, these, these things are called mutators, but if you click on this plus, you can kind of say what kind of if you want. In this case, I want an if else. It looks kind of weird in this form, but basically I'm saying I want an if else, or I could do some more else's if I wanted. And then I close it up, and then I've got my if else set up. Okay. You'll notice there's not separate if and if else blocks in, in the drawers. Okay, so I've got that set up. Now for my test, um, to get a property, you know, you'll notice over here in my button, I kind of want the button.text property, you know, it, it is here, uh, but it's going to say button1.backgroundcolor or some property over here. You just have to know that this is the get property block. There's also a set, right? But even though I don't want background color, I'm going to drag this guy out here. And once I drag it out, then I can choose the property. Okay, and in fact, I'll choose text. Okay, so it's a, it's a little bit weird because, you know, it's got one of them chosen by default, but once you drag it out, then you can choose the property you want. Okay, in this case, of course, I can want to just compare the text with um, the exact text play. Um, and you'll notice this is a, this little um, kind of fixed text block is, is a little bit different than you're used to. Uh, but anyway, I want to compare the text on the button, see if it's the exact text play, and if it is, then I want to start my app. Okay. I also want to set my button text to pause, and you'll notice it's kind of the same things with the set. I'm going to grab the kind of generic set block, and what I want to do is change the text block, and of course what I'm going to do is change this to pause. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing pretty well. And, and, you know, basically for the else part, so if, if the text is pause, then I want to pause the thing and, and change the text back to play. Okay, so in my else block, um, I'm going to go grab my player.pause. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is copy this block. Okay, and what I want to do is set my button.text to the text play. Okay, now I'm set up for my app, and, and what's nice is, and I got this running on my phone, I connected to the companion already, okay. Um, so I've got the app running on my phone, and if I just run it, if I click play, I have a dream. it starts. Now I'm going to click pause, and it pauses it back, then play again. So anyway, the, 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 you know, I hope I've kind of given you an idea of what the changes are here. And it really kind of makes things nice where you can just grab a single block out for sets and gets and then you choose what property you want. And it makes it easy if you want to change the property later.